I talked to my ex-wife last night. Where's she want this time? That woman has an amazing mind. Somehow Wendy was able to figure out that the reason that Matthew was doing poorly in algebra is that she doesn't have a maid. Makes sense to me. Please? <laughs> uh, honey, are you looking for me? Yes, love. I've got a big surprise for you. I'll be right back. Last time she said that, she came back an hour later with her sweater on backwards. <laughs> what I'm talking about. Not a clue. The opera, Dan. The opera. Next Saturday? Oh, darn, next Saturday. I'm working that night. What? Oh, yeah, see, the, uh, the thingamajig on the boiler, it isn't thingamajigging. It's technical. I'm so disappointed we can't go to La Bohem. It's my favorite talk. Don't worry, as soon as that baby comes out in video, it's yours. <laughs> Anybody like to go and see La Boheme with me next Saturday night? No, oh, I, I got a lot of Well, then, has anybody else got something they'd like to share? Well, I... No, I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing about it. Oh, you mean your job at the soap? Yeah. I'm sorry, but ever since we lost one of our riders on the divided heart, I've had to do double duty. I'm telling you, I have absolutely no social life. I finally understand what you people have been going through. <laughs> you know, Mary Beth, I was going to wait to the end of the meeting, but um, since you seem so desperate, I might as well break the good news now. Good news? Well, actually, great news. Uh, I've been thinking about your problem, and I think I've come up with the perfect solution. Your show needs a writer. Well... I've done a little writing. So, I just put two and two together. I don't follow you, John. <laughs> look, uh, look, I've been watching The Divided Heart all this week, and I think I can write for it. I've even uh, jotted down a couple of thoughts. <laughs> oh, boy, this is going to be a long night. Uh, now, the way I see it is, there is an opportunity here, Mary Beth, to educate as well as entertain. Educate? Yeah. Now, okay, picture this. Uh, Lance is deeply troubled about something. So, even when his wife, Vicky, shows up at the office wearing nothing but a raincoat and a smile, <laughs> Lance still can't get his mind off his problems. So, they embrace. And in a wild, passionate frenzy, roll onto the conference table. Vicky, Vicky looks deep into Lance's eyes and says, I can't live without you. Lance looks deep into Vicky's eyes and says, you know what I can't live without? Clean air. You mean that's all? No, 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 of course not. He takes her to bed. He turns out the lights and tells her about everything that contributes to air pollution. <laughs> Congratulations, John. You just iced down every horny housewife in America. I suppose you think you could do better? You bet I could. Really? Fine, okay. Be my guest. Go ahead. Try it. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
picture this. Lance has the hots for his sister-in-law, right? His wife, Vicky, finds out about this. What does Lance do? He does what any normal man would do. He fakes his own suicide. <laughs> One day, Vicky comes home. She finds Lance with a noose around his neck. She feels so bad, she lets him keep fooling around with her sister. This way, Vicky gets Lance, Amber gets Lance, and Lance gets the super sister sandwich. <laughs> That would never happen in real life. I wish someone would tell that to my sisters. <laughs> you know, Kirk, that's not half bad. Huh. Maybe you should be writing soap operas. <laughs> what? Kirk, a writer? What are you, out of your mind? Mary Beth may have a point. <clears throat> Nobody has an imagination like Kirk. Come on. He's the biggest liar we know. <laughs> you hear that, John? Maybe now you'll have a little respect. <laughs> Don't you understand? He doesn't know a thing about writing. No, he doesn't, but you do. With his imagination and your writing skills, there's no telling what the two of you could come up with. What are you saying? All I'm saying is that if the two of you decide you want to sit down and write something, I'll pass it on to the show's producers. <laughs> yeah, what do you say, John? Huh? Come on. Okay, 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 I'll, uh... Maybe I'll give it a try. Oh, great! I'm sure y'all are going to be just the kind of writers that the divided heart is looking for. <laughs> okay, Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> we're partners. But if we're going to try this, we're going to have to make a serious, dedicated effort. Hey, John, I'm with you. Okay. Okay, we can start at my place tomorrow. We'll need a typewriter and some paper and... And a secretary. We don't need a secretary. I'll do the typing. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, then... Who's gonna sit on my lap while you're working? <laughs> Bayside Motel, I'm calling to confirm a reservation for next Saturday night. Now, the name is Connors. Right, queen size bed will be perfect. No, just for the one night. Okay, thanks. Oh, Louise, honey bunch. Working late Saturday night, are we? All right, then. Who is she? Who's the tart? No, Louise, you got this all wrong. There's no tart. No tart? I, no, working I, late? The thingamajig of the boy. Yeah, the thingamajig is... Technical, you couldn't understand. Well, all right, that was a stretch. I refuse to listen to any more of your lies. Oh, Louise, I'm making too I'm much of this. I said I'm not going to listen. Please, if you just... God listen. save us. All right, right Louise, I'm, just, I'm sorry I lied to you. I really wanted to go to the opera with you. Okay, not really, but I would have gone. My father today! Hey, Louise, my father! Your father? He's coming into town next week. Your father? The motel room is for him. Your father? And you didn't want me to meet him? Ben, you're ashamed of me, aren't you? No, it's just that my father's kind of old-fashioned. And I was sort of nervous about him finding out that I was seeing someone... Someone... Just say it, then. Someone older than you. Louise, you know it doesn't make any difference to me, but you don't know my father. He can sometimes be a little... insensitive. Oh, who am I kidding? The man scares the hell out of me. Ben, I'm sure he's not the ogre you're making him out to be. Come on, I want you to call your father and tell him we're having dinner together. I'll charm him off his feet. Charm him off his feet? It's just what my mother used to say. God bless her, she died trying. This is good, this is good. I got a real feeling about this partnership. I think we're doing something really special, John. Okay, read back what we got so far. Lance Anderson says hi. I like it! I like it! Yeah, well, I don't. <laughs> Why? Because I thought of it? Oh, come on, Kirk. For the thousandth time, Lance would never say hi. What? He's not the kind of man that says hi. Fine. Have it your way. <laughs> oh, come on. What are you doing? Oh, you know Lance so well. Why don't you ask him what I'm doing? Look, look, Kirk. Oh! You touch me. <laughs> Kirk, we're getting nowhere. Look, we have to establish some ground rules. I mean, if we're going to work together, 
we have to be mature enough to encourage each other and respect each other's ideas. Okay? Okay. Come on, let's get back to work. All right. Okay. Forget about hi, forget about hello. Right. All we really need is for Lance to walk in, pick Vicky up in his arms, and carry her into the bedroom. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Very good. They kiss and tumble onto the bed, where they slip and slide on satin sheets. <laughs> they make mad, passionate love. There's a flurry of hands caressing flesh. They make mad, passionate love. Yes! Repeatedly. Yes! 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 <laughs> Completely spent, they fall asleep in each other's arms. The next morning, they wake up. She looks into his eyes, and she smiles. Lance takes her face in his hands, looks at her tenderly, and he says hi. Lance. <laughs> Lance would never say hi. He, he says, says hello. Hi. He says hello. I am not nervous. Will you stop telling me I'm nervous? You're the one who's nervous. I'm not nervous. Oh, my God, he's here. Then stop it. Now, you go ahead. I'll join you in a minute. I've just got to fix my face. But, Louise... Then you're going to be just fine. Now, just march right over there and don't let him treat you like a little boy. OK. Good. And stop slouching. <laughs> Hi, Dad. It's great to see you. Dad. You look terrific. Well, come over here, son. Give your father a nice, big, warm handshake. <laughs> Listen, Dad, there's something I want to tell you. Oh, well, um, good. There's something I'd like to tell you, too. Uh, over here, honey. Ben, meet Sarah, your new stepmother. <laughs> stepmother? Hiya, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it was destiny, Ben. Right here. Yeah, we were on the same wavelength right from the very first moment we met. I took one look at her, and she knew exactly what I wanted. Double Whopper large fries. <laughs> so naturally, you decided to get married. Well, I know, Ben. Sarah's uh, just a puppy. When a guy and a gal are in love, what's a little age difference, hmm? Well, I'm glad you said that, because there's a gal I'm in love with, and there's a little age difference in our relationship, too. Well, good boy, you see? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> That's my Louise. That's her talking to the waitress over there. Oh, come on, you're pulling my leg. <laughs> you pick the oldest woman in the room just to make a little joke on me? <laughs> Sorry to keep you all waiting. I was in the older ladies' room. I apologize for that little snafu before there. Uh, it's just when I first saw how mature you are, I just, uh, well, I never assumed that you'd be my little Ben's girlfriend. <laughs> of course. It could happen to anyone. Unfortunately, it happened to happen to me. <laughs> oh, how's everybody doing over here? Oh, Kate, I can't tell you how good it is to see you. Kate is a friend of ours. She owns the restaurant. Kate, this is my father. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Connors. Oh. Then you must be Ben's little sister. <laughs> now I'm a <his> stepmother. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go into the kitchen. I believe I smell something laughing. Bertie. <laughs> well, you sure got lucky snaring my little boy, huh, Lois? It's Louise. Oh. But, you know, you do sort of look like a Lois. Louise. <laughs> Sorry to keep you guys waiting. You folks ready for a drink? Oh, yes, please. I'd love a glass of white wine. Nah, I'll have the same. Me too. Me too. Uh, I I'm sorry, but I'm gonna need to see some ID. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> this happens all the time. Here you go. Not you. Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. And the young lady? Okay, I'll have a Coke. 
<laughs> well, uh, where did you two first meet? <laughs> oh, at the community center. Louise runs a support group there. Oh, so you're like a therapist? No, I counsel people who are recently divorced, separated, or widowed. And which of those are you? Widowed. I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's kidding, Dad. She's kidding. Tell Dad you're kidding. You tell him I'm kidding. Excuse me. So, where did you two go on your honeymoon? Sea World. It was always a dream of mine to ride Shamu. <laughs> Would you like a drink, ma'am? Who told you to call me ma'am? He told you to call me ma'am, didn't he? Give me a drink and don't call me ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can tell by your body language that things are going extremely well. I've never been so humiliated in my life. He's being a complete ass. Oh, Ben's father's giving you a hard time, huh? I'm talking about Ben. He's so intimidated by his father that he's allowing him to rip me to shreds and he's not doing one thing about it. I've half a mind to go over there and break a chair over both their heads. Oh, you don't want to break a chair over anybody's head. The worst thing you can do right now is to lose your temper. Louise, will you come on back to the table? Dad thinks you don't like him. <laughs> Here, use my chair. It's heavier. Ben, have a seat. Sure. Then your charming father made all those snide remarks about me, and you just sat there. What does it take to shake you up? Louise, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I know I should have stood up for you, but I've never been able to handle him. I just thought if we could get through tonight, then he'd go away, and we could get back to our lives. All right, Ben. I guess I shouldn't have pushed you into this disappointed you. No, no. Come on. Let's get back to the table. I'll be good. I promise. But, Bill, I don't want to give up my career. Who says a married woman can't be a drum majorette? <laughs> um, glad to see you two. Uh, Sarah and I were wondering where you went off to. Well, it's nice to be missed. Well, good, good. Uh, Louise, would you pass the bread, please? Pass the bread? That's it! I've had it! <laughs> Louise, I'm sorry! I'm not gonna let him talk to you like that! Ben, I don't like the tone of your voice. Well, get used to it! My voice has changed. <laughs> what kind of hypocrite are you, anyway, criticizing my relationship because of our age difference? And here you are, married to a girl who's a hell of a lot younger than Louise is older. Well, son, it's I'm... none of your business who I'm in a relationship with. I chose to be with this woman because because she's beautiful and sensitive and intelligent. And if you can't accept us, that's just too darn bad. Come on, Louise, let's go. Ta-ta. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Ben. You finally stood up to your father. What do you say we go back to your place as fast as we can? Feeling a little amorous, are we? No, I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Start scene two. Yeah, and then Lance walks into the meat locker and he finds Angela and Charles frozen in an embrace. But he doesn't know what to do because he loves Angela and he hates Charles. So he thaws them out with a blowtorch. <laughs> and he bludgeons Charles to death with a veal shank. You're the genius? No, you're the genius. No! You know, John, I have a feeling this idea might be too good to waste on that soap opera. You know, you're right. You're right. This could be a movie. This could be a blockbuster. <laughs> oh! Yeah. oh! Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I hate to be the voice of reality, but you just started and now you're going to write a movie? Don't you think you're jumping the gun a little? Annie, when we write this movie, you've got a part in it. Oh, my God! you two were able to work so well together. Well, you know, Louise, it, it, it was kind of bumpy at the start, yeah. but uh, we kind of stuck with it. <laughs> and we uh, we both uh, learned that 
when you're working with another person, you have to let go of your ego and open yourself to your partner's ideas. We would get on these rolls. <laughs> yeah. That's right as talk. And we, we would just get so, so caught up in the whole creative process right. that when we looked at the final product, we couldn't tell who wrote what. <laughs> Oh, hey, Mary, Mary Beth. Beth. Mary Beth, listen. We got so excited about writing that scene that we just couldn't wait to show it to you. Yes, <laughs> so we hand-delivered it to the producers ourselves. Right. <laughs> so I heard. Oh, we so, huh? What did you hear? Well, guys, uh, there's no easy way to tell you this, but, well, the producers hate your writing. <laughs> sure, they didn't mean hate. Well, I think they did. They also asked me for a picture of the two of you to put up by the front door in case you ever try to get in the building again. <laughs> Some nerve. They won't buy our script, but they want a picture of us. <laughs> well, we uh, gave it our best shot, buddy. Oh, and you had such dreams. I am sorry. What didn't they like? That scene was brilliant. It was better than brilliant. Well... They hated that part where Amber slips into a coma. Oh, that was John's idea. My idea? Come on, you came up with that. Oh, oh, oh. And you know the part where Nurse Sophie pushed Dr. Hawthorne off that cliff? That was Kirk's stupid idea. That was your that was stupid your idea. idea. It was your stupid you idea. Guys, no, guys, right. You were typing. Guys, right. You were typing. You were typing. I'm sorry, it was yours. Guys, that's the one thing they liked. That was, that was my idea. <laughs> So, Donald walks to the door, and he says, So long. Donald would never say, So long. He would say, Goodbye. He says, So long. He'd say, Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. He says, So long. He says, Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. So long. <laughs> what I'm talking about. Not a clue. The opera, Dan. The opera. Next Saturday? Oh, darn, next Saturday. I'm working that night. What? Oh, yeah, see, the, uh, the thingamajig on the boiler, it isn't thingamajigging. It's technical. I'm so disappointed we can't go to La Bohème. It's my favorite opera. Oh, don't worry. As soon as that baby comes out in video, it's yours. <laughs> I think I've come up with the perfect solution. Your show needs a writer. Well, I've done a little writing. So, I just put two and two together. I don't follow you, John. <laughs> look, uh, look, I've been watching The Divided Heart all this week, and I think I can write for it. I've even uh, jotted down a couple of thoughts. <laughs> Oh, boy, this is going to be a long night. Uh, now, the way I see it is, there is an opportunity here, Mary Beth, to educate as well as entertain. Educate? Yeah. Now, okay, picture this. Uh, Lance is deeply troubled about something. So, even when his wife, Vicky, shows up at the office... <laughs> Anybody like to go and see La Boheme with me next Saturday night? No, I got a lot of that. Well, then, has anybody else got something they'd like to share? Will I? No, I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing about it. Oh, you mean your job at the soap? Yeah. I'm sorry, but ever since we lost one of our writers on The Divided Heart, I've had to do double duty. I'm telling you, I have absolutely no social life. I finally understand what you people have been going through. <laughs> You know, Mary Beth, I was going to wait to the end of the meeting, but um, since you seem so desperate, I might as well break the good news now. Good news? Well, actually, great news. Uh, I've been thinking about your problem, and I... No. Dear John.
Khan is filmed for a studio audience. And they said it was impossible, but I was... I talked to my ex-wife last night. Where she went this time? That woman has an amazing mind. Somehow Wendy was able to figure out that the reason that Matthew was doing poorly in algebra is that she doesn't have a maid. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Please? Honey, are you looking for me? Yes, love. I've got a big surprise for you. I'll be right back. Last time she said that, she came back an hour later with her sweater on backwards. 